Welcome to Fairmont, West Virginia. I'm here with Corey and John from the band Skillet. Woo! I'm a big panhead. Yes. I've been a panhead for a long time. <laughs> You're the biggest Skillet fan in the world. You know what? Our, our history goes back further than you might even remember. Yeah, it must. I, uh, when your first record came out, mm. uh, with the pan on the cover, uh -huh. uh, I was 16 years old, and you guys came through Texas, and I just started a band called Screaming Mimes. And nice. so I called the venue. You're playing the light spot, small little Christian music venue in a tiny little town in the middle I of nowhere. I remember that. Yep. There was like yep. 30 people there. Right. Like 30 people <laughs> well, there. Well, you have to remind me of that part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just mean, but go ahead. Most of them were my family. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but uh, what I remember from that night, we opened for you guys. And I just love that record. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank I you. I love that record. But I remember how kind and intentional mm. you guys were. You came out and watched our set. We were just nobodies. And you came out and watched our set, and you were so encouraging. And I remember after that day thinking, I always want to treat other bands the way that Skillet treated ah, us. So oh, thank that's you for so that. cool to hear. Yeah. I love to hear that. And it sounds like that we were a nobody band, too. Yeah. We? <laughs> there was only 30 people. <laughs> we're in the same position, basically. <laughs> we, I've been a panhead ever since then. Oh, and, that's uh, so cool, man. That is a long time yeah. ago. 25 years ago. So that record oh, turned 25, gosh. right? Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. 25. That's and, and, and not even getting close to stopping. High five it out. <laughs> Come on, baby. Yeah. 25 you know more. It. Yes, Lord. 25 more. Uh, in the last 25 years, how has your music changed? Because it's not the same as that. That record was kind mm. of grunge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has changed a lot, hasn't it? I it think really we've been has. through 5,000 iterations of Skillet. We've kind of changed with the times. I mean, but I think what, what's always stayed the same is probably the passion of the lyrics. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, And your weird mm -hmm. voice. My weird voice. <laughs> I love that. About you. That's what stood out to me when right. I first heard I can and Saturn. <coughs> it was your voice. Yeah, it was so unique. Well, yeah. thanks. Yeah, love it's uh, you, people love it or hate it, but yeah, my voice. I think the passion of our lyrics, what we're about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our music's always been dramatic. It could be dramatically loud and soft, or a mixture of the two. And we've had a lot of with yeah. the you know, strings and orchestra mm -hmm. and electronics and heavy guitars. We've always tried to stir it up, and I think different records different pieces come out you know yeah. maybe a little bit more on the strings on this record a little bit more of the electronics on this album but what's always say the same is the focus about what the band is about mm -hmm. and singing about things that we believe in yeah. and that, that's yeah. what I know you're passionate about too yeah. you don't want to write yeah. a song that, you're, that you don't believe in mm -hmm. you know what I've always Do you said? guys write all your music yeah yeah but I've always said I would I would sing someone else's song if I felt it, you know what I mean? Right. If they wrote sure, it for me, right, I was like, sure. I feel that, I would write yeah. that, I would sing that, you know? And mm. it's important that you believe in what you sing. I think that's what makes yeah. great art. Yeah. Absolutely. I think yeah. there's an honesty in, in our lyric as well, but yet it's still hopeful, mm. you know? Yeah. So we can talk yeah. about in your journey with the Lord, you're going to hit valleys and you're going to hit mountains, you mm. know? And he's in all, both of them, you know? He's in all of it, but it's not always going to be amazing times yeah, you know they're right. going to be hard times and those are great because you got it those are trials those are temptations those are testings of your character and your faith and they're they're meant to you know you you come coming out stronger with endurance and perseverance and finding him in those places mm -hmm. you know so i think our, our lyrics can sometimes be a little more um honest about some of the hard times sure. but yeah. but yet not ugly not like leaving you in a hopeless place which you people know? probably relate that's to good. that more than anything cause i think so that's when i when i listen to music oftentimes is when i really need i need yes. a word i, I need right, something right. to to help in that to moment get you through perseverance through, yeah. perseverance produces character Character, character produces hope. hope. Say it again for the what, back row. What does not disappoint us? Hope, hope. does not disappoint us. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. yeah. So why do you choose to continue writing songs that include your faith? You know, you could write about anything. You write about mm. heartbreak, loss. I mean, you could write country songs. You could write about anything. Sure. Why do you choose to write songs that are about Jesus and about your faith? Yeah, I think for me, Christian music really helped me growing up. You know, uh, I lost my mom. She, I was 15 years old when my mom died from cancer. Christian music was um, a really important thing in my life. Now, it was important in your life as well, but I won't sure, speak sure. for Corey, but in both of our lives. Mm. But I learned a ton about the faithfulness of God through Christian music. Oh. I learned a lot about, uh, about the Bible from Christian music, from Petra and Striper mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. DeGarmo and Key <laughs> and all those, uh, Michael Smith, all those bands were, were so word heavy that um, I, I learned a lot about that faithfulness and it got me through my hard times and I, and I always thought if I had a chance to write songs for other people out there hurting in whatever various ways they're hurting then I would love to do that for God. I would love to make art that can bring glory to God mm -hmm. and as a believer 
in reality, no matter what you do for your job, I mean, I want to get on a, on a soapbox here, but you, whether you're a plumber or a school teacher or a songwriter, Absolutely. you are, we are supposed to do what we do unto the glory of God. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, we are his workmanship. We're missionaries mm -hmm. anywhere yeah. we are. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember working yeah. at a coffee shop when I was uh, a teenager and people would come in and share their life. And I thought, man, I have a ministry right here in this coffee shop. Absolutely. You don't have to be standing on stage to have a ministry and to speak Jesus. One hundred percent true. If, if, I if agree I'm a dentist, that. I'm going to pull teeth to the glory of God. Oh, right? that, that's <laughs> the old, that's the only job I can't amen you. Know, oh. uh, going to the dentist is like the worst thing in the world, right? Uh, but, oh, but I feel brutal. I still feel you though. Still feel you. <laughs> Point stands. But you said dentist, and it triggered me. I got a little no, triggered no during this pulling. interview. Uh oh, you mean like gnashing, grinding so of you... teeth uh, dreams? Oh no. Yeah, you always have those those teeth dreams where your, you know, where your teeth are falling out. I used to get those all the time. Oh. Move on. It's fine. I, I wanted oh, to add to that too. That um, Nightmare. music is Nightmare. such a powerful thing. It's like it's an eternal thing, you know. And so, sure. yeah. I mean, you, you could do music mm. for the sake of music. I just don't care to, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I want to. I want to use this powerful force, like. For example, we could make people cry with the way that we play or the way that we make something feel. Chords but you use. Yeah, yeah, however it goes, however it rolls, because mm. there's something spiritual within music. Right. There's something of the soul. There's just some power in it, you know? And so, but we want to use that for the glory of God because sure. I don't really want to do music for the sake of music. That's other people doing, that's fine, but that's just Life's a waste. Too short. It's, it's a waste of life to me. Like, yeah, let's, life let's is take too this short. and let's glorify God with it and let's get mm. the message across of like, hey, there's something more mm -hmm. than what you're living. There's something more than what you're seeing. And you can connect with God right now as you hear this music, mm -hmm. as you hear wow. these lyrics, in your room, on your own, he can reach you. And that's yeah. crazy. That's yeah. a crazy reach, yeah. you know? Crazy. Well, today, Will, he's, he's preaching about John 3.16. <clears throat> it's a verse, you know, probably the first verse I memorized. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know John 3.16. But his grandfather preached about it years mm -hmm. ago. His father's preached about it. Today, he preached about it. Why, why is that verse still so relevant today? Well, the gospel is always going to be relevant, right? The, God, I mean, that, the, the word is alive, um, um, the Bible says. And I think that people are, you know, every year we say this, the gospel is more relevant than ever. You know, we say this every year. Of course, the gospel is always relevant, but it is a, it is a unique year. I mean, we've never experienced oh, sure. anything like this in, in our lifetime. Coming. My grandmother's 90. 93, I believe, and she's like, I've never experienced mm. anything like this in my lifetime. Mm. This has been a really strange year, and I think that people are asking questions. People are wondering, okay, wh what does this mean if life goes this way? If life goes this way, is there something eternal? Is there something that mm. matters? Is there an answer for this? And we're increasingly a, um, a secularist society as well. We're not really a Christian society, as you may have called us mm -hmm. in America 50, yeah. 60 years ago. Sure. So people are asking all these questions and the gospel is is relevant to people wherever they are at. And so, as you say, John 3.16 yeah. is never going to stop being relevant. Yeah. It is the good news that, that if you mm -hmm. repent, you will be born again. You'll be given mm -hmm. a brand new heart. That's mm -hmm. amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. You've made a brand new creation. And so whether people are here at, 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 at the venue, yeah. or whether people are watching uh, right now, wherever you're at, God is with you, and the Word is alive and relevant to you there, just mm -hmm. as it is here. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, and you've been to these celebrations before. You've seen, mm -hmm. I, I remember standing at the invitation on a stage and seeing entire families come yeah. forward hand in hand, <laughs> Beautiful. just weeping because <clears throat> you see that they found this hope. That's they straight up New Testament right there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the New Testament. Household. Mm -hmm. Households yeah. getting saved. You that. know, my yeah. main church leader is from England. And uh, mm -hmm. he, uh, let's see, he, the first person in his family that got born again in England got born again at a Billy Graham crusade. Mm -hmm. And it, wow. it spread throughout the family. One wow. person got saved and then led his brother to the Lord, led the other brother to the Lord. Wow. And before you know it, both of the parents got saved. All five siblings got saved, and it's just it just goes and it goes and it goes and it, it, it it's, it's incredible. So uh, I, I'm I feel uh, I always feel very excited to do anything with the Graham Association. I love Will Franklin. Yeah. I never met Billy, but of course everybody mm. you got to love Billy Graham. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I just love the Graham organization. I love being a part of something that my music can hopefully we can can, can have fun, but it's it's really a supplement 
to what is happening tonight, which mm-hmm. is the gospel presentation. That's mm-hmm. what's unique about this. That's all about. Okay, it's all for the gospel. In, yeah. Along that line, uh, so I'm a skeptic at, at heart. You know, I kind of approach everything with mm. a certain amount of skepticism. Um, to this, to us, to a skeptic, uh, maybe someone who's on the fence about maybe not just Jesus, maybe religion in general, but they're just, you know, maybe they're searching. Mm. Why Jesus? Why Christianity? How do you how do you answer that question? To Why Jesus? That might be Why Christianity? Fence, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I have turned to my wife for that one because oh, now we're getting into hard stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, Why Jesus, honey? I mean, I think truth is is truth, you know, and I I believe in absolute truth as revealed to us through the scriptures. And, you know, Jesus said himself, you know, I'm the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Mm -hmm. And our society is pluralistic and we like to believe, well, be a good person, Mm -hmm. you know. And then there are many ways and it kind of feels we're feeling oriented now. Mm -hmm. So feelings are more truth, more defining of, of it. Um, lived and I, experience, if you yeah, will. It's, yeah, it's about we lived experience. About mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. but the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things, That's right? right? Mm-hmm. So if you're going to be led by your feelings, I mean, your own experience should lead you into knowing that that's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's going to lead you <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, it's just common sense in some of these things, looking at the universe, and do you think this all happened by chance? I mean, you can choose to believe that, but there's as much faith in that as believing that there's so, an intelligent yes, design behind great. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if there's only one way to the Father, knowing that you've got to admit to yourself yeah. that you are sinful on the inside, you are flawed. You know, mm-hmm. your best moments can, can, can be, uh, you know, par- paralleled to your worst moments, mm-hmm. right? You, you can't keep on that level of like, I'm always good, I always have great intentions, I'm always like, you know, mm-hmm. I never covet anything, I'm never yeah. jealous of you, mm-hmm. I'm never, even on the inside, you should know mm-hmm. of yourself that there's gross stuff in there. Yeah. And there's mm-hmm. only way for that to change, and that's through a new birth. Yeah. And there's only one person one man, God man, can live up to the holy standard of God. There is a holiness standard Mm -hmm. and there is wrath of God on sin. Mm -hmm. So he's given you a way Mm -hmm. to appease that, but you can't do it in and of yourself. And you should know enough that if you try, you're gonna fail, right? So this is the great news is this isn't about you, but some Mm -hmm. people don't like that because they want to earn something. But hey, it's not about you, Mm -hmm. you failed, but you can come to him. In fact, he wants you to, because at least you realize you failed, right? right? Come on become a new creation, get born again mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. the righteousness of Christ, you stand before God, and that is it. Yeah, yeah. if people, Man. yes, that's <laughs> awesome. about it. If people think that they can do it on their own, take Good a look work. at the world in 2021. Well, experience See of your how own. it's yeah. going. Exactly. Yeah. It's How's that healthy. working out for you? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. How's that going so far, man? Come yeah. on. Yeah. Gee, Everything whiz. we knew was out the window. It's yes, yeah. that's right. Well, I want to, so you guys travel around in buses, right? Yeah. Do you bring your family with you everywhere you yeah. go? Yeah, See the bus with your family? All right, so I know how being on the road is crazy and chaotic. It's busy. You're being pulled in so many directions. <clears throat> how do you keep your marriage healthy? Cor, I, I want to I hear from you on this, especially. <laughs> yeah, how again. do you keep your marriage healthy you know, with, with a crazy life like that? Yeah, I mean, not to sound trite in my answer, but I think it's, it's following scripture, right? Like Jesus is not just your savior, but he's your Lord. So that means mm. you don't actually have rights anymore. Like you're, right. you only have a right to do what he tells you to do and to live according to scripture, right? So we submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives submit to their husbands. Husbands love their wives like Christ loves the church. So, you know, if you actually follow those and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you to equip you to do those things. So I think like on a practical, it might be, he's really on my nerves and we have to play a show, right? Never, so if, it's if, never happened. <laughs> so you have a show where she does not make eye so, contact with you. You look over yeah. and she's just you know, like sometimes you make it in a fight and you have to walk yeah. on stage like, all right, I've just got to rule myself. Like this is, yeah. this is a moment where I'm serving, you know, the people, I'm serving him, I know what I got to do. And then we go mm. resolve, like we don't go unresolved in our, our conflicts. Um, and I think 95% of the time we actually just get along really well. There That's might be great. the 5% where it's mm. like you kind of have to know your place in the scheme. Like sometimes I'm an employee, I'm, I'm a guitar player and I do what he says. Sometimes I'm like, no, this is a much better part. And he's like, okay. Mm. I don't know, it's kind of like the, the, mm. the tension mm. of serving, like I'm here yeah. to serve you, he's here to serve me. Yeah, I think part of what you're saying, which I like, is that I do think a lot of times we tend to try to say, what, what makes a really good marriage? So I'm, I, I want to be a good Christian and I want to be a good husband, as opposed to realizing that, that they, they're really in the same thing. Uh, being a follower of Christ uh, is what makes you mm. a, a good husband. Yes, and yes. the more you walk in the Spirit, you walk in step with the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden I find myself being a really great husband yeah. when I wasn't necessarily trying. It's the work of the Spirit oh, in yeah. you. Uh, Francis Chan, 
he once said that the goal of marriage should be to prepare your spouse not for the last 10 years of your life, but for the first million years of eternity. <laughs> I just love, that. <laughs> love that. So John, you've written a lot of articles uh, recently about some really complicated subjects. You've been really bold in, in sharing truth, sharing the gospel. And I just wonder, how, how, do, you, how do you find the boldness to do that? Because a lot of us want to say something, right. but we don't. We don't speak into it because it's hard. And mm. uh, how, do you, how do you do it in love? Yes. You know, I think for me, the reason I started speaking out was a genuine, um, I had a genuine confusion of what was happening. Mm. It wasn't like I always had clarity on it. And I was like, I'm totally clear. And, and I just got to get the boldness to say it. It was more a genuine, what is happening? Mm -hmm. what, because I'm hearing the same things for all these different quarters, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. they're using the same language. And I can tell, yeah. I, I don't really know, understand the language. And so it was a, <clears throat> a bit of a deep dive into why people are saying what they're saying. And I started looking at the philosophies and going, well, if that's what they're saying, that's actually not in accordance with the historical Christianity. Mm -hmm. It's not in mm. accordance with the historical creeds um, sure. um, of the apostles and things like that. And this is really important and people need to hear it. And so the truth is, is that at first, I didn't even know that I was being bold. I just kind of oh. thought, because I'm really dumb. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so naive, right? You know it's true. I'm so naive, I thought, Everyone's probably confused, and I actually have an answer, so I'll share it. And it was then that all of a sudden I got the kickback from certain quarters of people mm -hmm. that were really upset, and I realized, oh, we are actually not on the same page yeah. about what Christianity even is. What it is, yeah. and or, That's right, yeah. and so I think that it is loving to bring a clarity to that yeah. and to say, hey, I'm not saying I hate you, I'm not saying that I wish bad on you, but I do think we should have some clarity that in reality, we are not brothers in Christ. You're mm. a different religion than I am, really. Mm. Um, once you have separated Jesus Christ from the Bible, you know what I it's mean? It's the no, foundation of all of it. Yeah, it's so just it's like, a philosophy at that point. It's yes. a philosophy. They're basically, I'm into Jesus, but yeah. I'm not into the Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, now you've divorced Christ from his own words. Mm -hmm. We are not worshiping the same Christ. Mm -hmm. I don't hate you for that, but I would like to be clear about that. And then we can have a debate uh, in love about yeah. it. So. I do think that it's quite hard, but one of the things I feel like is that the world right now is, they're not lacking in boldness to tell no, us what no, they think. Yeah, I mean, so how many true. times do I get called a science denier by people, even when I'm not denying any science, right? It's just like a, they, they throw words out and they're constantly, it's like, it, it basically what I've found is a lot of people are, are leaving what I would have considered the traditional foundations. They leave and accuse us of stuff. And then if we say something back to them, they say that we are being divisive. But mm. they're the ones actually that are leaving the mm. traditional, they're yes. leaving the flock, they're leaving the fold. You're the one being divisive and it requires a, a, a loving rebuttal. And yeah. there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. So I've just found, I don't think that I'm being divisive. I think I'm being as open with you as you are with me. But I think that if we, if we don't say it clearly, we're not actually being very loving. And I just base that on Christ himself. I mean, Jesus that did not chase down the rich young ruler and try to try to find a nicer way to tell him to sell his yeah, stuff. No, 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 you don't sell everything. Just yeah. if you would consider selling part of your mm. things. Mm. No, no, I just want to say, we'll do a little bit of a yeah. time. You know, Jesus was yeah. like, this is the deal. If you don't want to follow it, then you're not, you're not worthy of being called my disciple. Mm. Jesus kind of laid it on the line. I think that that's an example. Mm. Uh, so I, I, I think that some of this is redefining our definition of love. Yeah. Yeah. Being loving and being nice is not necessarily yeah. the same thing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So anyway, that's kind of how I focus on it. Not to bring division, to bring clarity that some people would be saved and be brought into the Absolutely. faith, maybe for the first time, right. or back to the faith. Yeah. You know, remember when Paul turned someone over to Satan? so that he could be brought back in, um, to repentance. In, in, to repentance. Yeah. That's a really great model, I think, for us. So there's a lot of people to be praying for, and I'm sure everybody watching knows what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, this yeah. is happening everywhere in, in America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we wander too far away from our home, we start to forget what home looks like. Yes. Sometimes we need to be shown a picture, reminded, and that's how it is with our faith. We, we change it so much that we forget the course, and we start to believe this thing that we like, that we want to but it's not the core of, of what the gospel That's is. That's right. And the and gospel I think is that what we need. The gospel is, and I think that it might be a good time to encourage people too, 
that all of us Christians, <laughs> yeah. sometimes we fight about petty stuff. Yes. You know, we were laughing earlier before yeah. the cameras were on about soteriology. Yes. We're of Calvinism yeah. and Arminius. We don't need to go to war about this. <laughs> we can talk yeah. about it. But Pre-trib, post-trib. <laughs> yeah, yeah, eschatology and, yeah. and yeah, tribulation or this or post millennial I, like it's good to talk about. Yeah. I, th I think doctrine it's an matters, but conversation. we yeah, are one matter. in Christ Jesus, whether we agree on the rapture or not. That's you right. know, yes. we are one in Christ Jesus. There are mm. things, there are things that separate who who, who is in the family of God yes. and eschatology and these things. Th those aren't those, those issues. Aren't, no. So Christians, let's stop fighting about the petty things and let's draw lines where we're supposed to draw lines. Mm -hmm. Love that. Yeah. Well, I hear some music happening. You guys are going to be playing in just a Sounds little bit. Sounds like a really, really good music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why are you here? Why do you come to a place like Fairmont, West Virginia? What makes you want to get in the bus and come all the way across the country to be in a place like this for today? What's, well, what's Corey, your hope for you today? already said earlier, getting to play music for Christ is awesome. Yeah. Getting yeah. to play music. I mean, we think of all these great Old Testament examples of music. Right, you oh, know, yeah. the army, but the, but the musicians go first. Mm -hmm. They would put them in front of the put army. Put them in front, yes. man. You know, we think about uh, the wall of uh, Jericho. Mm -hmm. We think about King, uh, King Saul tormented by, by mm -hmm. demons, yeah. and he calls for an anointed musician to come mm -hmm. and play. That's powerful stuff. And so we get to come here and do what we do. And uh, again, being a part of the, the, the Graham uh, celebration is always exciting because, again, there will be people that will have never heard the gospel before yes. here at tonight. Yes. And maybe they only came to see skill at play. Yeah. I hope so. I hope yeah. people came only to hear us play and they get to hear something so much better than that, skill yes. it. If you can imagine that, the gospel is better than skill it. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> I'm, I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for yes. hanging out. Thank awesome. you guys Corey, for having us. So much fun. I loved it. Uh, I'm believing in great things for tonight. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you guys so much. You got awesome. it. Woo!